Hello and welcome to the session on innovation in necessity, not nicety. My name is Bettina von Stamm and I'm the founder and director of the Innovation Leadership Forum through which I work with organizations to develop confidence to innovate, collaborate and lead in the 21st century. I argue that while innovation has been considered important for a while, in the 21st century it has become an absolute necessity. So why think about leadership in this particular context? While creating a culture of innovation generally requires a holistic approach that takes into consideration all aspects of an organization, there is one aspect which is ultimately the determining factor and that is leadership. I'm not the only one with this particular view. In, back in 2007, McKinsey reported that indeed leadership is the best indicator of innovation performance. So what is special about the conditions of the 21st century that innovation is no longer a nicety but a critical necessity? I summarize the above of the, the I summarize the context of the 21st century with 5C, which I'd like to introduce here. The first one is the unprecedented rate of change that is being introduced. So lots and lots of new things are happening all the time. In my chapter you will find actually a graph that illustrates this quite powerful, whereas upon the turn up to the turn of the, the millennium, a lot of things have the, the rate of change has been almost linear a number across a number of different areas. Something happened the turn of the millennium that facilitated an exponential growth at the rate in which change was being introduced. Just think about how long the development of products took 20-30 years ago. How long it took for innovation to disseminate around the globe. Product development cycles are getting shorter and shorter and information has the potential to disseminate instantly around the globe via the internet and social media. You might have already guessed that the facilitator of this acceleration of change has indeed been the internet. The internet is also the facilitator of the second C, connectivity. Imagine trying to find anything, information, people, um, products. What is your first step? Going to the library? Talking to friends? Consulting the phone book? Most of us will immediately and without thinking go online, fire up a search engine and within seconds have numerous pages of results. While this is great, the fact that there are generally countless pages with results can also be quite confusing and irritating as um, we don't really learn anywhere on how to differentiate between the different sources um, of, the, of the information we find. Another aspect of connectivity is that once we've put something online, there is no way of controlling it. We can't say who is accessing that information and we definitely can't say what they are going to do with it. My, ser my third C is convergence. You could also call it the disappearance of boxes. It seems that more and more industry boundaries are blurring, such as, for example, between banking and insurance, and here in the UK, also supermarkets. Rather than going to the bank to withdraw some money and the insurance broker to find pet insurance, you can pick up everything at the checkout in the big supermarkets here in the UK. Or think about the boundary between products and services. They seem to have disappeared increasingly. And even, I believe, the boundaries between our personal and professional lives that were kept carefully separate in the last century, these boundaries are blurring. Or do you not answer emails after work hours or even during your holidays? This creates interesting challenges as, in order to keep us sane, our brain has evolved in a way that stores things into boxes and things in boxes. So we don't have to waste energy to try to figure out what something is. This disappearance of clear boundaries again leads to confusion, ambiguity and very often anxiety. The fourth C is we, the consumer. We have more information available at our fingertips, even it might be, if it might be half more knowledge. We are more demanding than ever and we want to get involved in the products and services that we are consuming. And finally, there is the fifth C the challenges that we as humanity are facing. Never before 
has the potential to damage and destroy so many been surfacing at so many fronts. From access to food and water, to terrorism and wars, to an aging population, spiraling health costs and an overall population that keeps growing and which amplifies the, all of the above. So, if these are the drivers of the context in the 21st century, what is the overall consequence? In my view, the overarching consequence are levels of complexity as we have never experienced before. But I'd like to point out that there's an important difference between complicated and complex. If you look at this picture, this is a complicated system. The good news is, even though it might be difficult to understand, if I study it long enough, I can understand how it behaves, and most importantly, by understanding the past, I can predict the future with near certainty. I can even influence and change the system, and will still know how it will behave in future with near certainty. However, if you look at this system, this is a complex system, and it is an entirely different animal. While studying it carefully might help me understand how it has behaved in the past, it is near impossible to predict how it will behave in future. Influencing future behavior, behavior is equally challenging. So a complicated system is characterized by linearity. A follows B follows C. If this then is so, relationships in a complex system are ca characterized by interconnectivities and interactions that are very difficult to predict and influence. So, unlike complicated systems, complex system cannot be understood by, uh, by taking it apart and looking at the individuals, individual parts of it. As the saying goes, the whole is more than the sum of its parts. So, if you buy into my argument that the five C's of the 21st century create a context with levels of complexity we've never experienced before, then surely that must mean that we need to rethink on how we operate. If the entire system in which we operate has changed, so must how we interact with it. I have identified three key necessities, as I like to call them, or key, three key requirements, which I believe are prerequisites um, that enable us to not only survive, but hopefully also thrive in a complex context. The first of these is concurrency. If the rate indeed at which change was introduced in the past allowed us to believe that change was linear, we have to realize that this is no longer so. And again, this means that if we were able to, think, to do things consecutively in the past, we now have to do them concurrently. The second one it follows on from this necessity, because if we need to do things concurrently, then we must collaborate more. And not only with like-minded people, which is generally what we prefer, in order to survive in complexity, we need to collaborate with those who are different from us, which generally comes with some, shall we say, interesting challenges. And then finally, if indeed the rate of at which change is being introduced is faster than ever before, and the context is changing faster than ever before, then we need to innovate. And in order to not only spin faster and faster in our innovation cycles, we need to learn to innovate differently, to innovate sideways. We need to think differently about the what we innovate, as well as how and with whom, which opens up a whole other field of exploration. In short, we need to innovate the way we innovate. I believe that the biggest challenge to embrace um, the context of the 21st century and realize what is required is best said with a quote by Einstein. Problems cannot be solved with the same mindset that has created them. Meaning that a shift in mindset is required. And I hope that we are all aware that changing mindsets is rather tricky thing to try to achieve. In this particular context of the book Leadership, and my specific context, Innovation, I really believe that one of the most critical things we need to achieve is indeed how we think, educate and ex execute leadership. 
We need leaders who are willing to delegate and empower. We need leaders who let go of the belief that they can control. <coughs> Excuse me. We need leaders who enable their subordinates to be empowered. It's not just, a, just good enough delegating to people if the people haven't got the right skill sets to execute. And we need the kind of leadership that draws on the insights shared in the other modules of this particular course. That's it from me. I hope um, you find it useful and I am looking forward to our online engagement. Till then, thank you.